Welcome. Today I'm talking about Corydoras. My name is Cory, and I've bred a lot of Corys, and I've kept them over the years, and I own a store. So I know a thing or two about Corys. Today is my top 10 list. There are hundreds of different types of Corydoras, but there's different qualities in which I like. Sometimes the way they look, sometimes it's the parameters you keep them in, sometimes the way they breed, sometimes it's the price, right? And so I'm gonna go down, and not necessarily in my top 10, like number one's the best, but 10 of them that I really don't think my store can live without, and you probably shouldn't live without either. So the first one I've got, I think is the quintessential, this is what people are drawn to from just sales. If we say nothing about Corydoras, people, we have a bunch in the store. They gravitate towards this one, and that is the Sturby Corydora. With its polka dot pattern and its orange fins and its great size, it is a great tank mate. Now, pretty much for all the Corydoras that I'm going to talk about, the pH is anywhere from 6.6 6 to 8, depending on where it was bred originally. Is it wild caught? Isn't it wild caught? But wide parameters, and that's what makes Corydoras so lovable, is that they are tolerant of so much. Uh, with the Sturby Corys, they're no exception there. They are a great fish. The only thing you got to worry about with the Corydoras, including the Sturby, is getting them some food because you might have all these cool fish up top and they're eating all your snacks you're putting there. We want to make sure we're getting some wafers down there, some frozen bloodworms. They really, really love worms. And that's why they have those whiskers or the barbels there is to kind of root through the gravel or the sand and find these little tasty morsels. So we want to make sure they get fed. Don't let them get skinny. And that's going to go for all of these. So the Sturby Corydora, super cool. Can't live without it. Now, maybe you're a Corydora freak like myself, but you've got a nano tank that goes, ooh, we need some bottom dwellers. And for that, I recommend the Pygmy Corydora. It's going to have a stripe on it, and they only get about an inch or so. You can breed them in a little colony. So if you have no snails and shrimp and it's just them and no tetras or anything, just them, with really dense planted tank, you can find a baby or two, which is super fun. But you can put them with other nano fish, and you could check out other guides of what we do with nano fish. But they are very cool. Not to be confused with Habrosis Corydoras, another nano fish or nano corridor, they get a little bit bigger. They're a little more polka dotty. Um, but in general, this fish is going to cost you like $5 or less, which is nice. And get yourself a group of six or more. And that really goes for any of these corridors, six or more. And if you had 12 or more or 100 or more, the more you have, the better they're going to do. And you would think if you have five of them and you've, you've watched them for a year, you know them. Then get 50 of them and you'd be like, I've ne it's like I've never kept them before because they really act different the more they get. And uh, with Corydoras, I always say this and I, I mean it, you can't just go, well, I'm going to get one of each of these on the list. No, 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 you need to get a group, like an actual, like six of this one or six of that one. Um, they don't really commingle, you know, they won't get that, that uh, extra behavior out of that commingling. They, it's not that they'll attack each other, it's not that they're going to feel necessarily unsafe, but you won't get that extra benefit, you're missing out on that. The next one, this is a little bit of an outlier, this is the Barbatus Cory, and what makes this so special is kind of that golden head on the males, like that gold undertone, but then also they are a cool water Corydora. So they can go down to 67, 68 degrees, which is kind of cool when you have an unheated aquarium, which we obviously, well, I shouldn't say obviously, maybe you've never seen me before. We've done videos on unheated aquariums as well and different tank mates for that as well. So we'll put a link, you know, somewhere up at the top. And, uh, but these Corydoras, they get about three, three and a half inches. They like leaf litter. They breed at a little bit lower pH. Super fun. Bred them before. Uh, we even on the channel here in some of the fish room updates, you can spot that and collecting the eggs and how we did that. But very fun fish. Uh, expensive though. It's not uncommon to see these guys be about $30 a piece, which is, oh, too much when you're buying six of them, you know, you're a couple hundred dollars in. But if you have some success with them, when you go and you have a lot of babies and you got excess, they also get you some money back out of your local pet store or your local hobbyist. So, you know, if you're kind of up in your Corydora game, it's a great one to really uh, go with. I wouldn't get it as my first one ever. I would go with one of the cheaper options we'll probably talk about later, but they are a really great fish. Next up would be the orange laser Corydoras. Uh, these guys get their name from kind of the orange stripe on them. An easy fish to keep, just like most of these Corydoras. Nothing really particular about their care requirements. Just they cost a lot of money, they're fun to breed, and they look good. And uh, spoiling them with the frozen worms and real meaty foods is how I, how I bred them in the past. And uh, lots of cover. 
After that, collect eggs. That's one way to harvest them. Or if you got enough cover, you'll just find more babies. And that's the lazy way that I like to go with. One and one tank and done. Get them making more. Sell them off at some point. Give them to your friends. We gave a lot of them away. And uh, because they're a corridor that sells at anywhere from fifteen to thirty dollars, everyone's excited when they get five little babies and they get to grow them up, or six babies, or whatever it is. Next up, we've got the Panda Corridor. It might be the most famous, second famous. They're very popular. They don't get as big, which is, I think, why they're popular. And they've got that panda look to them of like, oh, the black and the kind of the gray or, or fleshy color to them. They work well in like the 10-gallon tank. You know, a 20-gallon tank, those are, are big enough where some of these other corridors I've been talking about, a 10-gallon is not big enough. And so... You know, these guys are one of the better ones for smaller tanks, but, you know, more space is always better for pretty much every every animal, whether it's human, dog, cat, fish, doesn't matter. More space, better. So if you can get a bigger tank, go ahead and do that. But, yes, we do recommend six or more of these. These guys are more at that $5 level, so you're looking at about 30 bucks for a group. But they'll be long-lived for you, and as long as you get that food to them, you shouldn't have too many problems. Next up, we've got, I think, the cheapest one. That is the Albino Corridora. Now, the Albino Corridora is an Anenius Cori that is the albino version. And for whatever reason, they are very prolific. When they have babies, it's 300 plus at a time. And so you can pick these guys up on the cheap for maybe as cheap as 250, but you know, as this video, if you're watching it two years from now, it might be $4 or $5 as things inflate. But anywhere from 250 to $5, I wouldn't pay much more than $5, I think. I think that's pretty, that'd be pretty high on the scale of Corridoras for the albinos there. But because they're in PetSmarts and Petco's and they're everywhere, they're one of the few Corys that people actually start with. And uh, too often you see them as onesies, twosies. Like the most common uh, way people buy fish that are uneducated, they buy pairs. They want everyone to have a buddy because they want them all to be happy. So they'll buy two of this, two of that, two of these, Tetris, two of that. And uh, they actually do a lot better in the group. So get, go ahead and start off with five or six of those things. And don't be afraid to get eight or nine of them, honestly. If you have like a 29-gallon tank, you'll... Once they kind of fully get grown and they're two and a half to, you know, maybe up to three inches and those females are nice and, and fat and full of eggs for you, uh, I think you'll really enjoy them. So if you don't like the albino version, they do make a, a bronze version as well. Some people are freaked out by that albino. Next up, we've got the Julie Corridora or the Trilineatus or the False Julie. There's a lot of little names that get thrown around here, but basically what we're showing on the screen is you got this good looking uh, striated pattern on this fish and keep them in a group of six. They're one of our best sellers. They can go a little bit cooler water. I would say down around the 70 degree mark. Nice for some of the tanks, like maybe with uh, some Hillstream loaches or Dojo loaches or something else you've got going on there. But uh, that's the, you know, basically you, you shot by look. And then what else do they do that not everything does? And that's what I got for those guys. Next up, we've got the Similis Corridora. And what I like about this is sometimes you call them the Violet Corridora. They've got like a spot kind of on the tail. They've got a lot of little spots on them. And then around that spot, kind of as they get bigger, they get, it's like a purple color, which you normally don't see purple in the aquarium. So they don't get huge either. But they're a little expensive. They can be on the upwards of $10 side, maybe even $12 side. But they, they're kind of like a deluxe panda cori. And it, they say the same... Uh, size roughly they've got very similar behavior but different patterning and uh, you know they're mostly captive bred so not too many wild cots are coming in so they're not that hard to get a hold of they're just not common like every pet store should have a panda corridora similis or the violet cori you know I'd say one out of ten stores is actually going to carry it because too often people won't buy a group of six fish that are ten dollars each because they're sixty dollars when I can buy those ones and they're only four dollars it's only twenty four dollars so uh, usually it takes kind of a more advanced pet store to really carry some of these Corridoras. Next up, I've got Brocus multiradiatus, which technically is not a Corridora, but most people would swear it is a Corridora. It's kind of like a jumbo-sized Corridora. They get three and a half, four inches, chunky monkeys for sure. And why would we use those? Well, we might use them with, uh, you know, some bigger like uh, cichlids, like maybe blood parrots and angelfish and uh, earth eaters and... Uh, you know, it's not stuff's not aggressive, but just stuff where you're like, ooh, that might fit in its mouth. I don't want it to eat it on accident. Or like in this aquarium with the goldfish, actually a good pairing with them because they're just big and docile. And uh, the biggest problem with them, though, is they are that $25 to $30 range. So when you're buying six, oof, that's a big investment. And they're not that easy to breed. But my 
my my thoughts on them is they are beautiful and they really add something that it's pretty hard to add in those communities that have these larger fish. So last but not least, by any means, is the salt and pepper Corydora. Now, depending on your locale, that could mean the Habrosis Corydora we already talked about earlier, or it could mean Paleatus Cori. And that's what I'm talking about right now, but these common names of salt and pepper Cori Anything that's got kind of black and white spots on it or black and gray spots, salt and pepper helps it sell better because no one remembers Paleatus Cori. They remember salt and pepper. So, you know, anytime I ever talk about that online, people usually go, no, it's actually this one, and, and people fight. But it's just depending on where you are in the world or the country and what your local stores are calling them. Typically, at all the stores I've worked at and here in the Northwest, we have had Paleatus B salt and pepper quarries and Habrosis have always been Habrosis quarries. So what is nice about them, they can go cooler water. They can go down to about 68. They get about three inches. You can get them in high fin forms. They tend to be like four-ish dollars, so they're on the cheaper range of Corydoras. Great entry-level beginner Corydora to get your tank started. And they got a nice pattern to boot and not hard to breed. So they've kind of got all those things wrapped up into one. And they really are a good beginner Corydora. Now, why would we have beginner Corydoras? Well, some of them are really expensive, but I think everyone at some point in their career ends up keeping Corydoras. And most people you talk to will be like, no, Corydoras are great. It's kind of like Tetras. Not many people hate Tetras because it's like, well, there's so many of them and, and they're pretty much mesh with everything. Like, I like Tetras. Same thing with Corydoras. They kind of mesh with everything and there's so many varieties. There's something out there for everyone. These are just 10 that... I happen to really like. That doesn't make them better than other ones. That just means these 10 catch my eye, where you might have a totally different eye and you go, well, I love Delphax Corys. I love, you know, I love the Adolphi Cory. I love, you know, you can find the ones that you like and track them down and then you become a Corydor nerd just like me and uh, then we can talk about it. So let me know what you're keeping down below. Let me know what you like and uh, hopefully check out some more videos and stick around. Hit that subscribe button if you're not too afraid and uh, thanks for watching.